Hello, we're back after a slight break, and I have a confession to make. Despite living in Brighton for more than 25 years, I, Mr Adam, have never set foot on Devil's Dyke, mostly because I'm scared of the countryside, specifically the strange creatures that live there. But today, the 31st of August, is the last weekday of 2018 that the number 77 bus runs, so I'll be facing my fears, fighting off the creatures, and facting the hell out of Devil's Dyke for you, my army of fans. Roll titles. Devil's Dyke, created by the devil, or possibly Ice Age Erosion, is the longest dry chalk something or other in the entire country. As you saw from that lovely montage, I came here by bus. Well, I had to. There's no other way to get up here by public transport, at least not now. But rewind 110 years, and there are a whopping three other forms of transport that took you to the top of this hill. So what were they? Number one was an actual proper train line, standard gauge and part of the national network. It took around 20 minutes from Brighton Station to Devil's Dyke. Have you ever wondered why Aldrington Station even exists? Hardly anyone uses it, hardly any trains stop there, and it's less than 10 minutes walk from Hove Station. Well, the answer lies in the original name of Aldrington Station, Dyke Junction Holt. It opened in 1905 to serve the Brighton and Dyke Railway, which operated from 1887 until the start of 1939. You can see the route that spur line took from the shape of the roads by the station. Other stops on the line included Rowan Holt, which opened just a few years before the route closed, and Golf Club Holt, which was only for use by members of Brighton and Hove Golf Club. The railway rang a bell in the clubhouse to warn passengers to down their brandies when the train was approaching. The terminus, called simply Dyke Station, was located around 200 feet below the summit. The branch line closed on New Year's Day 1939, driven out of business by lazy people, i.e. motor buses, being able to make it right up to the top of the hill. Apart from a tiny bit of platform on a private farm by the golf course, nothing of the line remains, although much of the route has been turned into cycle paths. Two, there was also an funicular railway right here from 1897 to 1909. Two little side-by-side -side trains going up and down on either end of a cable. The greedy town of Hastings still has two funicular railways. These are the remains of a top of the Devil's Dyke Steep Grade Railway, which started down below near the village of Poynings. Seemingly, there wasn't much passing trade from the Ickle village of Poynings as the funicular funiculared off after just 12 years. And three, there was an actual cable car, or aerial railway, Britain's first apparently. There are still some remains of that. It operated from 1894 and closed down also in 1909. It ran across this valley, a gap of approximately 300 metres, which is more or less the same length as the new zip line on Brighton Beach. All 
those transports. So why the heck was everyone so keen on coming up Devil's Dyke anyway? There's nothing here but an overpriced pub and a car park. Now, yes, but back in Victorian times, there was a ton of stuff up on this here hill. This included a major fun fair with an early incarnation of the roller coaster, a bicycle railway, multiple fairground attractions, a shooting gallery, a shed load of billiards tables, a camera obscura, a bandstand, and much, much more. Devil's Dyke Adventure Park was established by H.J. Hubbard, a big game hunter who bought the land in 1892. The fun fair was dismantled in 1918 when the area was requisitioned by the military. Ten years later, it became public land, reduced to being nothing more than standard, terrifying countryside. And that is the story of Devil's Dyke. This is the last in the current series of Fact Me Up Brighton. In fact, having left Brighton for the day, we have now decided to make this the last Fact Me Up Brighton ever. Mm -hmm. Heck, in the very first intro, we promised to do 25 episodes and we've actually done 26. But don't panic, fans. After a brief break, we will return with Fact Me Up Sussex. Roughly half of the episodes will still be about Brighton and Hove, but we'll also visit exotic locations such as Hastings, Eastbourne, Worthing, Chichester, Arundel, Burgess Hill. OK, probably not Burgess Hill, but who knows? See you then. If you enjoyed Fact Me Up Brighton, why not watch all 26 episodes over and over and over and over and over again until your brains hurt?